Take Two Interactive is failing gamers and its employees since it's having to lay a number of them off. That's pretty unfortunate for those for those employees. And we'll talk why. Talk a little bit about why that's happening in a second. The plan also includes eliminating several projects in development with titles yet to be named. Could it be that a lot of these gaming companies, a lot of these Hollywood movie producers are producing a lot less in 2024 because things are failing? They're not making the money they used to make because they keep pushing woke politics. Take-Two Interactive will be cutting the company's workforce by 5% as part of a broader cost reduction plan. The plan, which was approved by the board of directors of the video game publisher Tuesday, also includes eliminating several projects in development and streamlining its organizational structure. That should involve getting rid of all the equity people, you know, the ones that have pushed that narrative as opposed to actually been involved in in, uh, making games. That would be helpful. Leading to the layoffs, the company expects to bring in $165 million in cost savings. The company did not name the projects to be eliminated. Take-Two Interactive had 11,580 full-time employees as of March 2023. The company will also incur between $160 to $200 million in total charges in connection with the plan. It's supposed to happen by the end of this year. The company, which acquired mobile game publisher Zynga, blah, 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 and other games, is uh, getting rid of a lot of people, you know, because maybe because of this stuff in the last few years, this sort of political indoctrination that they seem to be pushing on people. It says here, they are stunning and brave. That is obviously sarcastic, right? But they spent half this video, right? This is take two interactive now. They don't talk about games anymore. The first half was about hardware and uh, not that much about games. We're not going to watch all that. The second half is about diversity, equity, and inclusion. So watch this for just a second. We're not going to watch the whole thing. I'm Alan Lewis, Vice President of Corporate Communications and Public Affairs for Take-Two Interactive. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to Virtual E3 2021. Take-Two, like many organizations, is deeply committed to and actively involved in numerous initiatives to enhance diversity, equity, and inclusion within our society. There it is. That's why you're really having to get rid of people and we'll have to get rid of more if you keep pushing these narratives. You know, GTA 6, people are concerned it's going to be woke. It's been one of their most, you know, one of the most successful games of all time, selling millions and millions of copies, and they're going to ruin it by making it woke. These people say it's silly. That's not true. It is probably going to be woke. It says here, Setting up to be a prime example of wokeness in the gaming industry, recent leaks suggest the game is going to extraordinary lengths to cater to the overly sensitive ideas of the modern players. There is no modern audience, as far as I'm concerned, that actually wants video games that uh, push the push politics on them. I just don't. I just don't think it's the case. There's very few people that I, that actually want that. Majority don't. Anything but good for those of us who appreciate the base nature of GTA series. Firstly, GTA 6 introduces a pronoun system supposedly to make all game, all players feel comfortable. This move reeks of pandering to the politically correct cl- crowd. Gamers should be able to enjoy a game without being burdened by a pronoun choice. We're here to play, not to be constantly reminded of the social justice agenda. Anyways, it's just, it's not looking too good. I, I'm not ex- that, all that excited about GTA 6. I miss GTA 3. I like that one. And I even played GTA 2, the top-down games, back in the day on my Dreamcast. That was fun. But yeah, it's not it's not looking good with stuff like this going on. Affecting meaningful, sustainable change is a continuous process, and there is no one solution that can achieve that goal. We believe that to enact change, especially for those in underserved and underrepresented communities, there needs to be a continuum of activism and engagement with educational. You don't want your company to be an activist company. That's not their job. Their job is to provide goods and services to people that need them or want them. That's your job as a company. You know, do what the people want. Don't push, you know, specific political agendas. It's just not what appeals to people. 